All right, guys, so let's bring up another concept now. What I want you to think about is our nervous system depends upon receptors, okay? We have receptors in our skin, receptors in our joints, receptors in our inner ear, receptors in our eyes, and these receptors oftentimes respond to mechanical changes. So a lot of times they're referred to as mechanoreceptors, okay? Now what I want you to think about is that there are two classes, if you will, and we want to call them one group tonic and another group phasic. So what I want you to kind of think about is if I stand here, okay, and let's say that I don't move, well, I have tonic depolarization of receptors in the weight-bearing joints, especially my ankles, my knees, my hips, my spine, right? Weight-bearing joints will have tonic depolarization. So as long as I'm upright, and opposing gravity, I'm getting neurological input to my brain. So as humans, we are designed to walk upright. So I constantly get input from the weight-bearing joints. So here's something to kind of consider. If I'm standing up, I should be getting some tonic input with nothing more than gravity as the main stimulus. So if I just stood right here, I would be getting some neurological input to my thalamus and my cortex to keep me functioning, okay? So what's the problem then if I decide to sit down? What's the big idea? What if I just prop my legs up? So how is this a problem? Because if you talk to your patients or you talk to my children, sitting down doesn't seem like a big deal, right? But in the world today, what we're recognizing is we tend to sit for excessive periods of time. Now right now, the term sedentary means sitting in excess of three hours per day. Most of us meet that criteria. Now, much like you, myself, during the practice, I don't sit much during the day at all. When I teach on the weekends, aside from being online, I oftentimes get to stand throughout the weekend. Oftentimes we'll go for a four mile walk or a six mile run. So there's a lot of times that I spend in an upright weight bearing posture, which is good for our nervous system. So when you detect and correct subluxation and you improve the ability for a patient to move, what do we need them to do next? Move, right? So now the idea is if I stand here, this is tonic. But now as I start to kind of move around, this brings in phasic aspects. So as I move my arms up and down, as I do some different things, as I march in place, now I can activate phasic receptors as well. So you've got phasic and tonic, right? So we are designed to be upright and have tonic depolarization of receptors in the weight bearing joints of my lower extremities and my spine. This is why we say our legs, right, are designed to carry us from point A to point B, right? We're designed to be upright. So if I say, what are your biggest muscle groups? You say, well, your glutes, your legs, your spine. Okay, but then what if we are sitting again all day long? Then our legs are going to get weak. And what does that mean if our legs get weak? That means that they're going to have a decreased number of mitochondria and a decreased frequency of firing so that the central integrated state of the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the dorsal thalamus is reduced such that the postcentral gyrus cannot drive to threshold the precentral gyrus of the prefrontal cortex for us to have high reasoning and humane function. So that's important for us because I need to have endurance in my legs. So later on when I ask you, how important is it to do the two minute wall sit in practice? It's huge because that identifies fatigability. So if someone who is walking on a regular basis, they can do the two minutes. Someone who's not, is not going to. But if my quads get weak, then that changes the tone of my hamstrings, which then changes the mechanics of my knee and my ankle, my foot and my hip. And now we get into orthopedic or musculoskeletal 
orthopedic dysfunctions. And so that weakness in one muscle will change the angulation of a joint due to the aberrant tone in the antagonistic muscle. And that causes subluxation. So a lot of times when our glutes are weak, our hip flexor becomes dominant and it changes our hip. And now patients will have a snapping hip type of problem or a medial compartment knee problem or an ankle issue or dropped arches or the anterior biceps, excuse me, the anterior deltoid and the pec will change the location of my shoulder. And now I've got slap lesions, superior labral A to P lesions, or I've got bicepal tenosynovitis, or I've got rotator cuff injuries because the tone here changed the angle of the joint here. And now I come to you with a host of orthopedic complaints due to neurologic interference. And so we have to look at the whole person in a top-down fashion as it relates to brain, to brainstem, to spinal cord, right? But we're designed to have tonic and phasic activation of receptors. Tonic from weight-bearing receptors, joints, that respond and have a tonic discharge rate. But the only stimulus really is gravity. Then there's phasic receptors that respond to my movements. Okay? Hang on to that.